This is the Rebel Scum Podcast. Available in video on YouTube and audio wherever you listen to your podcasts. Every week, Brock and James talk the latest rumors, news, and theories from a galaxy far, far away. Support us on Patreon for exclusive offers and join the Star Wars discussion. Patreon.com slash Rebel Scum Podcast. Here are your hosts, Brock and James. You're always scum. Rebel Scum. Oh. Fantastic stuff. Great opening. Brock, Happy New Year. Happy New Year, James. 2020 also. Wow. Also. We're at. <clears throat> Good year for Star Wars coming up. Obi Wan Kenobi, Cassian Andor, Book of Boba Fett's already started. Bad Batch season yep. two, hopefully, and Mandalorian season three. Cannot. This is the greatest year in Star Wars history, Barn. Aside from, I would argue, Brock. I would argue the Phantom Menace uh, opening in cinemas because that was like, yeah. <sighs> but this that is was a big deal. <laughs> yeah, uh, but this uh, from start to finish should be a fun year for it. So I hope you've had a great holiday season, Brock. I did. It was relaxing. How was how was what? your? <laughs> yeah, mine was uh, pretty relaxing as well. Um, good times. I did get uh, some Star Wars figures. We talked about it. We'll talk about that on the show, though. If you want to see what I got Star Wars related. Neat. <laughs> this is the Baby Yoda. It was like a little fun thing. Anyway, this is ranking Star Wars. This is the 2020 also edition of it. We've done this every year for five years, Brock. Five, yeah. Five, five times we've done it. When we started, there was seven movies. No, <laughs> eight movies because we started the year after Rogue One. There was eight movies when we started this. There are wow. now 11 and growing. And maybe we'll have to add the show somehow to this list. I don't know. My memories uh, earlier this week or last week was uh, two years ago we saw uh, Rise of Skywalker. I was like, "What's yeah. the title again?" <laughs> Isn't that oh, man. crazy how time flies, though? Yeah. Well, when you're stuck inside, it, it tends to go. But well, uh, yeah, almost outside. Mm, almost. <laughs> Not if Omicron has anything to do with it. Mm. Ah, it's winter. What are you going to do? You're not going to go anywhere anyways. I go camping in the wintertime. This is when, no, I, go, when I go to all the best... <laughs> I don't go in the summertime. This is when I go to all the best raves. Mm-hmm. All right, ranking Star Wars. This is a show we... The definitive ranking list, Brock. There's about 30 lists. So what's happened is we've got some of our podcasting friends, our YouTube friends, and our Patreon subscribers that have all given us... Their top 11 Star Wars movies in order. I told them not to sweat it. It's not a big deal because ultimately we add those numbers all together. And when we add them all together, this is the order they come out in. So, you know, um, the 11th place one gets one point and the first place gets 11 points. And I spend the entire month of December adding these up. And it leads to this day right here. Ranking Star Wars, the fifth annual ranking Star Wars. Typically, we have Fantasia or Rob on with this. We will have a special guest uh, a little bit later on the show. But for now, it's just the two of us because we wanted this year to be intimate. (laughs) Did we? (laughs) (laughs) All right. Ready for number 11? Yeah, let's do it. Can you just take a guess at number 11? Uh, Either Last Jedi or... Attack of the Clones or Menace. Attack of the Clones. Okay. <laughs> Attack of the Clones coming at number 11. Much to the chagrin of Andrew Fantasia and myself. <laughs> we both love this movie. I say it every year, Brock. When I think Star Wars, I think of this film. It's grown on me significantly throughout the, the year. I will say the list is very different from other years. And I think part of that is is the, the adults who were like the 20 year olds who were kids when these prequels came out are now starting to really influence uh, these lists, but attack of the clones, once again, bottom feeder. There's always (laughs) a bigger fish. There's always a bigger fish. Um, That's the problem with these, this, this list. It's like somebody has to be at the bottom. So it's like, it's on the list. Um, (laughs) It made the cut. It still made the cut. (laughs) I think the problem is to like, 
Star Wars fans are are bad with change, so they don't want to yes. change up things. <laughs> so. And that's when, when I ask everybody for the list around November, whenever it is, I say, mm-hmm. don't overthink it. Just literally yeah. go right now. Right if you were to watch Star Wars, just which one would you watch? That's your number mm-hmm. one on the list. Mm-hmm. Like, and and tomorrow it might be different, but this isn't about that. This is about the here and now. So let's just have fun. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's I rewatched it recently, and I'm like. Yeah, there's good things in this. Uh, I've always said it year in, year out. It's like the Clone Wars shows make these movies like, oh, wow, this is important. Um, But I feel like some people can't get past Hayden Christensen's acting. (laughs) So I I think it's great. Oh, you say that, but he's also playing Darth Vader, don't forget. Who has mm. who when he says those lines as a robot, you don't question it. But when he says those lines as a teenage kid, 20 year old, you question it. Same person under the mask. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. But uh yeah, I mean, it's what George Lucas always dreamed of, right? Like the tragedy of Darth Vader, the tragedy of Anakin Skywalker, I forget what he titled it. It's like, yeah. So it's like, uh, it gives us the explanation of like, especially this one's like, this is what the Clone Wars is. And you're like, oh, and this is like the whole premise of the, the of the prequels, uh, that one monologue that, uh, Alec Gansky gives in New Hope. It's like, yeah, okay, this is this. Now I understand. And then you get a little bit of a taste of it in Revenge of the Sith. Um, but yeah, not a terrible movie. Not my favorite. I have a feeling next year is going to fare better than Mm. than the bottom of the barrel. And I think the reason why is our number 10. I I honestly think um, that, uh, well, we should go to number 10, I suppose. Um, (laughs) Everyone knows I love this movie. There's a big movement online to make Solo 2 happen. But I think the reality is, Brock... As much fun as this is, it suffers from several things. Yeah. One, I think the cinematography is fine, but it's not pleasant on the eyes, which I think Mm. immediately makes you kind of like want to reject it. The other thing is, especially in this post Disney Plus world, is why was this not a Disney Plus series? Like that is what (laughs) this was made for. So I, I, I fully believe that this would have been received a lot better on disney plus plus you know they fired the directors they done those reshoots there's a lot of problems plaguing it which is probably why we haven't heard anything uh but here we go number 10 right after attack of the clones and pretty close on the counting that's why i think maybe in a year or two this one might uh might be at the bottom of the barrel with attack of the clones is solo a star wars story Higher up on my on my list just because I think it's fun. There's a lot of characters in it that like I think need a chance to have their moment again. But you raise a good point about cinematography. I just finally watched uh, Shang Chi. I know I'm saying that wrong, but like I watched that on my TV on Disney Plus, and that thing was beautiful. <laughs> so Solo coming out now would be like no, this is not acceptable um as we know it's plagued by a million different things and they forced it to be what it was but yeah like if, if this was made like four years later not like released now it'd be like oh this is this is all you got i mean hawkeye looks technically better than solo solo so i, I still love the movie well, uh, I, think, I think it deserves a chance right so so I think that the difference is in it's it's in what the cinematographer are going for, and don't forget yeah. they got the cinematographer of Arrival doing Solo, yeah, and he made it moody and and whatnot in that style. And also, I don't know what it would have looked like with Lord and Miller, but I, I'm guessing it couldn't look much yeah. different. But Ron Howard directed this movie, and he also directed a Christmas classic, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, um, which. <laughs> Which, by the way, Brock, is hilarious because when that came out, it was like not well received by a lot of people. And now it's just like the prequels where people are like damning the new one with Benedict Strange Batch. Like they're like, mm-hmm. no, the only real Grinch is Jim Carrey. But that's also Ron Howard. And if you watch that movie, it's also dark and muggy. And like, yeah, yeah. You know, 
there's like there's colors, but they're kind of like they're in the sky's like always gray. It's never blue out, you know. It's it's always kind of like damp looking. You're like, God, who who feels looks depressing in that one? So like I don't know who it was. <clears throat> if it was uh, Bradford Young, is that a name? The cinematographer from Solo, or if it was uh, Ron Howard, um, because again they had the old Lord of Miller footage. Why wouldn't they incorporate that? Like yeah. obviously they incorporated that in, so I don't know. It's just it's it's yeah. They, they, you know, it, it cost a lot of money. It didn't make a lot of money again. And I also brought I don't know if um, it came out in May, right after the Last Jedi, which yeah. of course divided fans. Like either you're with the Last Jedi or you're against it. You know, it's there was yeah. no in between, and it came out really fast. And I still believe that. Um, I guess it was Bob Iger made, there was a mistake made at Disney where Mary Poppins came out in December that year. Yeah. Solo came out in May. And I think they gambled on that and they, they, or they, I think whatever their stats were for those two movies, I think they, they misjudged them. Cause I think solo still, I don't know if it would have made a billion dollars regardless, but I think it would have fared better in the December day where we're all used to going and Mary yeah. Poppins could be in May because Mary Poppins doesn't hold any significance in December. To, I mean, it seems kind of like a Christmassy movie, but unless there's a, unless it takes place at Christmas, it could, you know, it could be their summer. It could be their Cruella, right? Cruella did very well this year. It could have been Cruella for them, and I, I think yeah, that was yeah, exactly. uh, that was an error on their part. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, yeah, uh, I don't know. It's yeah, I still love this movie. <laughs> uh, no, I hope you, you know something. how I feel about it. So yeah, Solo. what I watched something this year and it just made me want to watch Solo. I can't remember what it was, but I watched it and I was like, I just want to watch Solo now. Like it just made me like I appreciate it made me appreciate Solo even more. And I love Solo; it's way higher on my list too. Uh, don't get me wrong. I'm just we're just talking about the movies here. Like things happen, and I, I think I do think it was seen as a failure, even though it made whatever it made it was, it was seen as a failure for sure. In the eyes of of uh, of Disney and the and the shareholders and all that, like yeah, you know, I mean, these movies don't make a billion dollars. What are you gonna do, right? <laughs> uh, and number nine, we're gonna have a special guest joining us for number nine. It is the Last Jedi. Brock, let's bring in our special guest. Let's do it. Okay, joining us is Patreon subscriber Disney. Desi, hello. Thanks for joining us. Great sons. That's how you say hello here in Batu. <laughs> yeah, because you uh, are joining us. You're joining us from Walt Disney's gone. Office. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Brock, oh, you're going to get awesome. there one day. Don't worry. One day, yeah, yeah. They, but, uh, COVID exists in the galaxy far, far away. You're good. The only travesty right now is the fact that The Last Jedi is this low. Like, number nine, uh, I'll let our guest go ahead because I think we agree yeah. on the same point, but you go ahead. What are your thoughts? Um, I rank this number one, and I <laughs> asked to rank everything else number nine to try to boost it in the rankings, but obviously <laughs> that didn't lot. work That's out. <laughs> It didn't work out for me. Still wound up here. But you know what? There is no such thing as a bad Star Wars movie, in my opinion. So I'm glad that the movie even got made. (laughs) We'll we'll see if you're still saying that when we get to number six. But I'm going going to... (laughs) All right, let's start with you, though, Dizzy. So Last Jedi, what is it about the movie, though, that made it number one on your list? So my... Number one uh, fandom is Disney Parks. And so when Disney bought Lucasfilm, the thing I was most excited about was the idea of having a Star Wars land. And so, yes, I liked Star Wars movies always since I was a kid. Um, Went to go see The Force Awakens, enjoyed it. Didn't really think about it again until it was time for The Last Jedi to come out. When I watched The Last Jedi, there was just something about it. I loved the way that it surprised me. It took turns that you didn't see coming, where a lot of other Star Wars movies, you kind of 
get where it's going ahead of time. Um, I think the only other one where you had twists and turns like this was The Empire Strikes Back. And I think a lot of the problem that people have with this movie, if they were to watch the movies in order, like watch the prequels and then watched the original trilogy, they might actually have the same kind of feelings about Empire Strikes Back. Because if you watch it prequels through original trilogy, you're like, oh, but Obi-Wan was such a big character. How can they kill him off just like that? Or, um, you know, the, the twist of Vader being Luke's dad. At the end of that, people were like, oh, he must be lying. He must be lying. And so people didn't like the idea of Ray Nobody. But I actually loved that idea. I thought that was great. It shows that anybody can be special. You don't have to come from a particular family. You don't have to come from a special bloodline to be special. Anybody can be special. Anybody can have the force. That's what really excited me. It got me into the fandom. As somebody who also likes literature, I saw a lot of parallels with some of my favorite books. I know there's a lot of Raylo hate out there. I happen to love Raylo. I won't go too much into it, um, but I did see a lot of parallels um, as a Disney fan. Beauty and the Beast, a lot of parallels with that. Um, one of my favorite books is Pride and Prejudice. I saw a lot of parallels with that. Um, so watching that movie, I just, I couldn't get enough of it. I was so excited. I went back to the theater multiple times for that one, whereas with The Force Awakens, I saw it the one time in theaters, didn't watch it again basically until The Last Jedi came out. And then I was like, okay, now I got to rewatch them all in order again. Um, so I watched one through seven leading up to Last Jedi, watched Last Jedi, felt completely blown away, watched it over and over again, got like obsessed, started going down the YouTube rabbit hole. And that's how I found you guys. And <laughs> uh, so you can thank The Last Jedi for me being here and being a Patreon supporter. Well, then it needs to be number one. <laughs> Obviously, is that a is that a Raylo backpack behind you? It sure is. Yep. Uh, That's awesome. <laughs> nice. That Very is nice. so cool. I got a official merchandise. Oh, I hit a wrong button. <laughs> That's nice. So awesome. <laughs> um, I can't agree with you more. Like that is one of the things about Last Jedi that uh, for me after like taking it in. I think we watched it four or five times in the theater, but it's like. Ryan Johnson seemed to be like, okay, I can make a Star Wars film that kind of fits with what you're doing. But he's also, there's times where you're like, this is the moment where we stop worrying about what George Lucas would have done and start making our, our own Star Wars. And I think, right, I think there was on a trajectory to do something new in Star Wars. And unfortunately, because of decisions made by the executive, it's like, okay, we're going to go back to J.J. Abrams, who is very good at making a love letter to George Lucas or film like, you know, uh, I forget that movie where it's a love letter to Sp Steven Spielberg, uh, super eight. Super eight. It's like, he's very good at like respecting the source material, but like so many times in that, in last Jedi, I'm like, yeah, this is him saying, no, these ideas can't, these hijinks that we get as much as we love following Scooby in the gang, doing the same thing over and over again. It's like, no, like, Star Wars is a thing that can exist outside of a formula. So I totally agree. Like I would love to know what could have been if the bosses didn't get involved. I don't know. I don't know if that's fair enough. That that may be judgmental. But yeah, Last Jedi is piece de resistance. Well, they did want to bring Johnson back for nine, and he turned mm. it down. And he that's where his quote unquote trilogy came up which i don't think that's gonna happen i <laughs> i don't want to be negative about this but that's, it's been like five years it's i mean he's doing knives out good for him great i think though yeah. the counter to that is the problem with it is all the, what you were saying about ray being nobody is there's nothing it's not a problem in the movie but there's nothing concrete right it's not like she's a nobody the end he, they kind of he kind of leaves it open for interpretation and then the next guy coming in can interpret it however he wants. And that might, you know, that's, I would say in hindsight only, that is 
I think the biggest sin of the movie is leaving it open for that for decisions to be made later on. I, I don't know if it does lead it up to interpretation saying they were nobody filthy drunk junk traders who sold you off for drinking money. Sounds pretty definitive to me. <laughs> um, but I feel like but... they wanted to go in a back door and find a reason to bring Shivp back in. Yeah, I, I think I think the, the the problems with all that are stem stem from another one that's coming up later, and that's the Force Awakens, where they they should have just nipped everything in the bud in that movie and not made us wait a movie to find anything out. Because, mm -hmm. but like I said, like when Snoke dies, it's one of my favorite scenes, and the Praetorian the, Guard. That is my favorite lightsaber battle yeah. in yeah. all nine films. Really? Yeah. We're gonna have to have you on our top five lightsaber <laughs> battle film. Because it's, I saw a... Phantom Menace up top, but that, yeah. Sorry, Brock. Everyone knows I love my Praetorian guard scene. That is one of my favorite scenes in Star Wars, bar none. It's true. Look, throw, that Praetorian guard fight and and Phantom Menace, like, Duel of Fates, like, really match up. Yeah. That's a really good point. I don't think I've ever really compared it, but, like, that scene is awesome. I love, uh, uh, not to go into details, but what I like about that scene is, like, <laughs> Ray using the lightsaber is it's very it's like very like ragged and it's like she's she's holding her own but like it's like it's not refined like like uh Kylo is it's like oh I love I love that detail like and there's stuff like that like you want that's what makes a good film like these little details that like, perhaps you scope but after a couple times you're like that's really cool that that happens that's amazing so I don't know I, I never understood the hate of like how she understood to use a lightsaber at all because she has a staff for the entirety of the first movie. <laughs> like she like I'm pretty sure the mechanics are similar, uh, but it's yeah, Praetorian Guard, best scene in the movie for me. That is my. Do you have a favorite scene? <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> porgs. <laughs> Can I please say these are the cutest merchandise items? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They've Brock ever come got up me. With. You know what? You might have seen these. Brock got me a Rice Krispies square from Disney World, shaped like a porg with yeah. porg icing on it. Wow. <laughs> Do you remember that, Brock? Yeah, 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 porg. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh man, you win with yeah. Porgs. No, like remember when they were they told us about porgs before the movie came out, and it's just like, how is that not like gone to Ewok <laughs> level? They're so cute. They're not. Uh, they don't have. They're not. They're very different from Ewoks because Ewoks have characteristics, whereas Porgs are That's like true. birds, right? Yeah. But that's a different. I love Porgs. I'm not. I'm not knocking I'm, the Porgs. I'm waiting for a Porgs movie, just like the Ewoks <laughs> movie. It's literally the just <laughs> flying V. We, were, we tweeted Ryan Johnson about Porgs during a show before. Oh yeah. Because you're like, what's a what's a herd of crow of. Uh, Porgs called, so I tweeted him, and he said a murder. <laughs> <laughs> so Ryan Johnson also, uh, we were at Star Wars Celebration, Brock, right before that in Orlando. Before that movie came out, and uh, Ryan Johnson seemed like so cool, down to earth, loved Star Wars, loved the fandom, uh, really respected it. So as much as I said, I think the trilogy is never going to happen. I would be. I mean, I'd be for all for anyone doing a Star Wars movie at this point, but I would be all for Ryan Johnson to see what he would do. Like, because it would, the one benefit he would have is no pre existing junk, right? It's just like, this is his Star Wars. What do you want to do with it? And I would, I would love to see it because Brock Looper, I don't know if you've seen Looper, but Looper is, no, I know Brock, you have, but Looper is like a phenomenal movie with this lore in a world that he's created. And I think he would thrive doing his own unique star wars movie yeah it's and like, i know uh, you guys haven't come down to see uh galaxy's edge yet uh, but no, they I... put porg nests inside no. of the millennium falcon <laughs> yep oh that's amazing my sister Beautiful. went and got me an apron from the droid factory an apron <laughs> that's, that's awesome. awesome one day we'll like to go there all right let's move on to number eight uh, this one surprised me how low this one was. You thought Last Jedi would surprise you. Look at this one. This is the... No. My graphic board. Right? Like, this is... Now, this is not number one on my list, but I always... This is um, the perfect Star Wars movie because it is 
Without it, it is no other Star Wars, Wars movie exists, and it's self-contained. It works with anything before it. It works with anything after it. it is the best Star Wars movie, hands down. But <laughs> on our list, it's number eight. <laughs> I feel like this is a backward list of what I would have done. <laughs> is number seven Solo a Star Wars story? Because that's what I would have No, picked. Solo was... Uh... <laughs> Solo was ten. Solo was ten. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... Hmm. I mean, I always tend to put this dead center of my list because it's sort of like you, you got to respect it. You got to give it its like bona fides or maricopa, whatever Italian things, whatever. Um, it's like you can't have anything without this movie. So it has to be somewhere. And I can see you not putting the top three because you're usually like this movie. And I watch this over and over. But like, it's a new hope. Like, come on. Um, but James keeps saying, like, we have a new audience in this list of people that are like, I don't relate to that movie. It looked old in comparison to the, if the prequels are your Star Wars films, then perhaps you're like, uh, it looks a little too Mm -hmm. fake or I don't know. It's, I mean, in my mind, the non remastered versions of like a new hope is what I see. Not like. Here's Java, and here we put a couple stormtroopers in the background. So it's like it's hard to even say, but you can't like it's it's a new hope. It's it's the first one. So uh, disappointing, a little low. I don't know. <laughs> it is disappointing. I'm I'm Happy curious to see the rest of the list now. I think, yeah. Well, uh, hmm? I think going forward, James, you should compile the list. And then have people on that, like, this is your numbers, and this is your numbers, and they are the opposite of each other. So there's at least, like, we can understand this thought process. <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot of work, but we could try to look into that in the future and figure it out. Look, I just ask for lists. The people giving lists giving me the list, and the people who don't, don't. And if people are arguing that A New Hope is too low and they didn't submit a list, submit a list. Yeah, yeah. That's all, right? You know? I mean, I mean technically, did. I did rank it last. So. <laughs> yeah, you did. You did. You, well, it was tied with every other movie for last. So. Yes. <laughs> that, that that actually that list is the reason why this is number eight. It would have been higher, but your list. <laughs> it's so low. All right, let's go to number seven. The remake of A New Hope. Force Awakens coming in at number seven. <laughs> who, who voted on this? <laughs> the pro the problem isn't who voted on it. It's it's where they were in all of the lists, right? So if you. Mm. If, Force Awakens came in at number five, let's say, more times than the New Hope did. And New Hope came in five, but then it came in six once. That I don't have the numbers in front of me, but they were probably close together. That's what happens. It's, it's like where they are on everyone's list, and if one person puts you know one of them low, and you know, look, this is the you know what I love about the Force year. Awakens is how original it is. That's definitely <laughs> the best part about this. I'm movie. telling you, it's a love letter to George Lucas. Yeah, 100. And it, but you know what? It, it did one thing though. Um, that I think you both will agree on, and that is it, it reinvigorated Star Wars. It brought Star Wars back. It's the reason why you have the Last Jedi. Yep. It's the reason why. Uh, I mean, it made two billion dollars, right? It's the biggest movie. Endgame beat it, whatever. But like, <laughs> it, it it like it came it came in like Miley Cyrus, and took everything out in its path. <laughs> And, and like, you know, I mean, I'm, it. you know how I feel. I think it's a donut. It tastes great, but it's empty calories. It's like, yeah, that was fun. Yeah. That was fun. You know, I think uh, Finn is, for me, Finn's a standout in that. Um, uh, so, you know, it has, it definitely has its moments. It's a lot of fun. Um, and I'm, well, I'm curious to see those 20 year olds who were kids for the prequels, where those kids for the sequels are in 20 years, how these movies are for them. That's what I'm more curious about. Well, because I loved The Last Jedi so much, I did go back and rewatch The Force Awakens multiple times to pick out things that I didn't notice upon the first watching. And bringing it back to The Last Jedi, I love how Ryan picked out little things in that that maybe just got looked over or you didn't give a second thought in the force awakens and it it brings those little moments into a bigger importance than i would have thought 
the first time around. Like, I didn't even think about the fact that when Kylo was interrogating Rey, he was a lot gentler and calmer with her versus you see him interrogating Poe and he comes out looking abused and battered. Uh huh. And I'm curious if he wrote that screenplay and they started shooting, I think a few weeks or a month after the force awakens hit the theater, he wrote the script based on the force awakens screenplay. And I'm wondering if that added to, to those elements that you love so much is because the screenplay would have, it would have made it stand out a little bit more maybe. And he would have been like, Oh, because he like in last Jedi going back to, he seems like, uh, his main objective there is is Kylo and Ray. Yeah. Right. It's like that movie is about like that's for me that's the best part of that movie is their mm -hmm. their connection, their relationship, what's going on there. And that a lot of that might have come from the screenplay where you might not have got that had you know they done the George Lucas approach where they made a movie every 3 years and he wrote he started writing the movie, you know, half the year after this one came on the theater. So, yeah, that's a good point. Anything else anybody wants to say about uh Tifa? Uh, ironically, the I rated it on my list, so it was number seven. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not going to be over New Hope, and New Hope I tend to put dead center just out of respect. So it's like yeah. they're the same movie, so they can't really be apart. So, <laughs> uh, well, speaking, of, I just I said it last for Last Jedi, but I gotta say for this one, talk about a movie that doesn't commit to anything. <laughs> <laughs> this, is the, this is the one that doesn't commit. Uh, JK box. is very good at setting things up, <laughs> not yeah, yeah, so yeah. good at paying them off. <laughs> no, I think when you set something up, you should also know why you're setting it up. Like, what, yeah. what was the purpose? All right. Speaking of setting it up, oh boy, I think I'm going to lose two people on this right now. Which. <laughs> I like, I like. There's no bad Star Wars movie, and then it's just like, oh my god! Except That's my this favorite one. Part about doing, <laughs> this is my favorite part about doing this list every year. Is everyone's like, no, I like them all, and then one movie squeaks in higher than it should, and it's like, shut it down. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the JJ stuff being together is good, I suppose. <laughs> um. I don't know. I, I I didn't hate this film, but it was just sort of like you watch Last Jedi and you're like, this is cool. What are we going to do next? And they're like, the same thing. <laughs> by the by, the villain you haven't seen in 20 years. He's back. I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, they should have. They should have just left GVPB. I'm sorry. Not not a fan there are aspects of the rise of mm -hmm. Skywalker that I like, but so much of it just confuses me and doesn't make sense. Like why bring in Jana and those other former stormtroopers to be like, yeah, yeah look, stormtroopers are real people. And then they go on stormtrooper murder sprees and go, oh, because they're, they're just uh, hum humanoid versions of Ewoks. Like, <laughs> 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 We're going to humanize stormtroopers and then completely just murder a whole bunch of them. Yeah. I have a lot of fun with this movie. There's some um, like just... army that nobody knows about. <laughs> yeah, I know it's true. Well, th th they, I think that kind of tied into those aftermath books that they were telling us through. But anyway, I, I actually really enjoyed this movie. It was on TV in November and I was at my parents and my dad's like, Oh, Star Wars is on. He left and he just left it on and we all just kind of watched it. Um, it's a fun movie. I think it's a harmless movie, which, you know, good or bad. Like, and I mean harmless in that it doesn't, it doesn't do what you were saying you loved about the last Jedi and the twists and the turns and takes chances. It's harmless in the, it's, 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 if the force awakens is, is the donut, then this is like the all you can eat buffet. And it's just like, go in there and take it all. And you're not going to like it all, but you know, you can leave some on your plate. Uh, but you know, there's gonna be there's gonna be like a shrimp in there somewhere or something. And um, it, I, I do. I, I gotta say one more point though: is people hate the line like somehow Palpatine returned. My argument on this though is like a, a terrible line, short. But I don't believe that that's the point in the movie where anybody is explaining the actual reason why Palpatine returns. The explanation of his return is actually when he says their pathway to the dark side or something, something, something. It's even worse. It's like. <laughs> Like 
it's actually like the, the somehow He's Poe's name return quoting himself. Yeah, but like I don't think Poe like the Poe scene is not supposed to be our explanation to it. It's supposed to be like they're like oh, we have no idea what's going on. But instead of figuring it out, we get well the pathway to the dark side. I'm back. Like, oh, all right. So there is no explanation. It it gave us like our main cast. It's like oh, they're friends. It's like what I think was kind of missing for the other two films, even though they're like. You knew why they were together, but like the hijinks they get up to again, Scooby and the gang. It's like I could have watched a film about that, but it had to be the first, <laughs> not like oh, posing this for ten minutes. Like no, let's like have all three connect and be friends, and that's when we hit last jet. Stuff starts going bad. You're like oh, okay, but I think I've said before, like that third movie once we have the culmination of the kylo and ray storyline come together i'm like yeah i i can get on this board i know a lot of people are like oh there could have it could have been better of course it could have been better but i was just like that across the three three movies i'm like yeah i like that so i don't know no bad star wars film I, <laughs> that's how you end all fights now i it's don't like, film i don't like how anakin skywalker anakin's lightsaber winds up in sand at the end of the movie mm. makes no sense why would he want his lightsaber buried because it's not luke's lightsaber luke's yeah. lightsaber was the green one uh anakin's no, is the one that gets that. buried in the sand next to leia's lightsaber and the only time leia's on tatooine is as Jabba's slave why would yeah. she want her lightsaber buried there no, I don't there's a get really it. good explanation. You're missing the point. As J.J. Abrams doesn't care about the prequels, he only writes the original <laughs> movies. And that's what you're gonna... I, I actually, I think I was on a, Around the Galaxy podcast before it dropped, and I said it was going to end with Ray on Tatooine saying she's Ray Skywalker. I don't think I called the sabers in the sand, but it's kind of, it's here's the problem with that scene is it's like a nice scene, but yeah, when you break it down, it makes no sense. But it's a nice scene. But, yeah. but J.J. Abrams doesn't like the prequels. That, like, you know, he said at one point he wished he could put the skeleton of, of Jar Jar Binks in the sand, right on Jakku. He's like, it's someone who just doesn't like those. And so the callbacks to this movie are all from those movies. And so I'm being, I'm joking, but the real reason is because that's that's his Star Wars, right? And we got to call <laughs> back to his Star Wars, not actual Star Wars. Uh. Um. All right, let's get past this one and piss you guys off even more. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, like, now you can't be surprised anymore. Now it's just like, no surprises. Anything can happen. <laughs> well, like, earlier what? in the episode, <laughs> early in the episode, James, you made a good point. Like, Phantom Menace, when it came out, was a big deal. Just as much yeah. as Force Awakens, like, it was a big deal. So, like, you got to give it its props. Pod racing is cool. Has yeah. my favorite lightsaber scene. Um, it does. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Duel I will give sorry, it that. Uh, soundtrack is fantastic in this movie. Mm -hmm. it, this is, I think, peak John Williams. Mm -hmm. For sure. So we all agree this should have been number one. No. <laughs> I think I ranked this last, last year. My and name like, legitimately is. Legitimately last. Not like all of them are last, but this one. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I legitimately think legitimately put last. And Brock last year. typically does too. I, I put last again. too today. Yeah, you and Brock week, both this year. Whereas this is like my number. It, this one rages between number one and number three for me. It's really, <laughs> really high. So. The real good thing is that we have a meme that came out. Where it's well, that kid's head on a banana and it says, "My name yep. is Bananakin and I'm a person." <laughs> that there's nothing. Well, so, what's his name? What's the actor's name that plays Anakin? Oh, uh, he's Jake in Lloyd. Jingle All the Way. Yeah, Jake Lloyd, yeah. <laughs> My name is Banana. I can't, I can't watch Jingle All the Way without thinking about Anakin Skywalker. I uh, remember when they cast, they're like, it's the kid from Jingle All the Way. I was like, that is an interesting choice. But, uh, <laughs> he does look like a, like, he kind of looks like he would grow up to be Luke's dad. Like, when you think about mm -hmm. it, like the way he looked then, right? You're like, yeah, I could buy that. Uh, but I, I love Vander Menace. I love Jar Jar Binks. Whatever. You, everyone knows. I, I tout it every year. I'm usually crying because it's always last or second last. <laughs> um, wow. But, <laughs> look, I have this above Last Jedi on my list every year. So, <laughs> I'm a fake fan. Um, 
And this one was three last year. It's four this year. A rude Ooh. one. All right. I'm satisfied so, with this one. This is fine. Yeah. Everyone's okay. Compared with to four. the other ones we just went through. <laughs> The problem, Where... the problem with those middle of the pack ones, though, is like literally, it's like one point here and there, literally mm. separates them. It's it's these top four were pretty much. I will say, like Rogue One and Up were miles ahead, and Attack of the Clones and Solo were miles behind. The rest for me, though, I actually love Solo. I would have put Solo above Rogue One as my favorite really? spinoff. Yeah, interesting. Um, but. I think Rogue One is fine. If it didn't have that last scene, it would not rank mm. this high. No, I agree with that. The, the movie that as like a, a whole, the link back. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, the movie as a whole, I think is just fine. It's that last scene that puts it over the top. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I remember when Solo was coming out. Josh and the Den of Nerds thought that Solo was going to have a similar scene, but it was going to be Boba Fett. At the hmm. end of the solo movie, uh, but that's a good point. But it has Darth Maul, and Darth Maul doesn't do anything. If Darth Maul did something, maybe Solo would rank higher. Look, Solo's higher on my list. Like it was higher on Brock's list as well. But yeah. it's it's weird that Solo's becoming the new like Attack of the Clones for people's ratings, where it's just like it's the worst one. It's like, but how I do you justify? It. I so do I. I I was saying to Brock when we were talking about it, like earlier this year, I watched something that reminded me of it that wasn't nearly as good, so I just put on Solo instead because it's just. Awesome. Then I put on Free Soul and I was like, this is not the same thing. <laughs> this is way different. <laughs> Brock, how do you feel about Rouge One? Um, I tend to put it as the best of the new the Disney era Star Wars films. Not that that I I think it's just because I feel like people get behind it a lot more. I mean, that might have changed, but like when it was just Last Jedi and Force Awakens, Rogue One, it like, it was like, I don't know how I feel about the other two, but like Rogue One was good because it was just like, it was a standalone story in itself, but then linked as well. Um, Darth Vader in that hallway is pretty badass as well. Um, but yeah, I, I think it was... A the definitive, definitive like, hey, we can do something that is almost completely removed prior to like Mandalorian, even though, I mean, we could argue none of this Star Wars thing is removed from the original story, yeah. but like, like it was the first step and I'm like, maybe we can make this happen. And I think it was a success. I think Solo should have done just as well. Just, they should have not fired the people. My favorite thing is like the Star Wars directors that then get kiboshed or like aren't, and no one liked their Star Wars go on to make some hugely successful thing like <laughs> <laughs> Lord and Miller have into the spider verse and Ryan Johnson has knives out and you're like, maybe it's you. <laughs> if not me, it's you. <laughs> so I don't know. Well, that's but, yeah. possibly, but like you, what you both said though, is that Vader scene, but that Vader scene is when you go to a concert, the band does not end it on that sad love ballad. They end it with that, banger of a song and that's what this did it's like because you're along and like you said it's a fight you're like oh this is fun okay we're in star wars this is great and then that scene happens and then it goes right into a new hope which is a terrible star wars movie if you watch like this <laughs> and but you're like ah oh, that's why i'm here right it, and it leaves you leave the theater with that you leave it with oh my god that's the great right so i think i think and i think that's what resonates with people is the last thing you see and the last thing you see is the most exciting thing in the movie and you know maybe until the praetorian guards you know or maybe even with it it's probably the most exciting in the disney era or close to i mean you know you, and that's what you leave it on so i could see this being high so i know you guys haven't been down here to see galaxy's edge yet did you ever get down here to see the void no which was no. the vr experience no it was basically set during rogue one era oh. um cassian andor makes an appearance i can tell you all this without giving away spoilers because they have <laughs> gone bankrupt because of covid so they're no longer in business but that oh. was incredible um k2so is there you're oh, wow. like it really feels like you're there and you are in the stormtrooper gear and fighting darth vader um 
that I mean that experience coupled with this movie makes that movie better for me because I feel like I lived it. That's pretty cool. I would have loved to have tried that. Yeah. I did Star Tours. <laughs> That's good too. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> that sounds like a lot, but they're no, they're no longer doing that because of COVID and uh so they, they're good. doing oh oh they're no longer doing the void yeah but yeah. they are doing star tours i can't believe that's still around with the galaxy's edge but okay whatever sure milk it <laughs> yeah and i get to see hondo on a regular basis oh come on <laughs> hondo hondo <laughs> sound like the cartoon i don't think i've actually heard his actual voice he in does that. he does he sounds so good he looks jim fantastic cummings jim cummings I, <laughs> Every time I'm there and I'm in queue, people think that that's an actor because that animatronic is so good. <laughs> yeah, it, my sister sent me when she went. Sent me is the is the like, the Millennium Falcon ride like? Is it a fast ride or is it more of an interactive ride? Because I've never it's figured like, out. If... It's kind of an interactive ride. It's a simulator that you control. You're right. You're um, right. So it's kind of like if Star Tours and Mission Space had a baby. That's gotcha. kind of what it feels like. That's cool. it Except can't... that you're actually doing it, whereas Mission Space tells you to do it, but it's really going to do whatever it wants. Oh, um, I see. You really do have control over it in right. uh, Smuggler's Run. So they can't be like spinning you around while you're trying to like make sense of what's in front of you. <laughs> right. Right. Oh man, I can't wait to go on that. <laughs> Come on, Omicron, get out of here. We got to go to Florida. Right? We're yeah, gonna, we got a lot going on. <laughs> Dude, can I just add one question though about going to Disney? Is it still like super? Like, do you feel super safe when you're there still? Um, it's so. Last year when I went, I could get a picture on Main Street USA with my family with nobody in the background. <laughs> oh, man. That oh, is not the awesome. case anymore. Um, okay. There, there is still like restricted capacity where you have to like make a reservation before you can mm. go to the parks, but it's significantly increased from last year. Um, they don't have the markers on the ground anymore to tell you to stay six feet apart, um, hmm. but they do still require a mask indoors. So, hmm. interesting. You know, compared to other places in Florida, it's probably safer. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to get on a flight and we'll be there tomorrow. All right. <laughs> All right. We're going to go to our top three. So, Disney, Disney, we're going to say goodbye to you now. Bye. Um, thanks Bye. for joining us. Yeah. Um, we'll see you around sometime. You're going to go watch uh, some Last Jedi right now, I believe. Or, sorry, Rise of Skywalker. Or I'm actually going to uh, hop over to Batu right now and uh, get on Rise of the Resistance. So. Get her off the show. Get her off the show. Right. Get her off We're the show. All right. Thank you so much. Have a happy new year. Happy new year. <laughs> All right, Brock. Number three. Number three is Revenge wow. of the Sith. Brock, like I said, those the kids to 15 years ago, 16 wow, years ago, wow. are now adults. And this is one that each year, it started very low, if you remember. I think it was like probably third last it has grown and worked its way up. The only person who has it, like Andrew has this very, very low on his list. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people, Brock, have this number one to number three. It is number one to number three. And I talked to a lot of people. I, I did the Outlander Club um, the from the 26th to the 31st. And a lot of people have a lot of love and respect for Revenge of the Sith. It is like arguably the best of the prequels. And... Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think. What's the big thing in it? Uh, the Obi Wan Vader fight. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm just trying to think. Well, no, was, I was going to say is like, is that one the best lightsaber battle? But that technically, that's Phantom Menace. So, um, no, yeah, like it. It's kind of what well, we wanted. It's like if they had just made, I don't know, instead of Phantom Menace, they just oh. Here he is. He's a Jedi, and then just made it a two-parter. Like it's what we're like. Just watching the final transformation and how how uh, 
Pal- uh, Palpatine's plan all just all interworks, and you're like, oh, <laughs> so. Yeah, well, we were we were sold on a lie with the prequels that it was going to be the story of Darth Vader, but in reality, it's the story of yeah. the Empire, the Empire's formation, and the Emperor. And it, and I think, and I think that was brilliant on George Lucas's part. And people argue the ex, the um, what's that word I'm looking for? The execution all the time of that. But mm-hmm. I would argue that uh, I love Revenge of the Sith. I think it's great. You know me, I, I'm Phantom Menace's. Uh, where my heart lies always is with that one. But this movie, you know, especially if you were 10, you know, or under, which is a lot of people on, you know, 10 or under 13s are on there. The people who were being added to these lists now, like that's, that's great. You know, when you're that age, this is the most exciting movie you'll ever see. And it's just a little dark, right? It's like in, in the, you know, there's something that was lost, along the way like now you don't get it at all but like those like 80s kids movies are just a little dark right it's like yeah. they just go down a little bit i mean we watch movies that weren't for kids back then i guess but like the kids ones like the goonies when you think about those movies they just go a little bit further than you're used to when you're that age and i think a movie like this does that and it successfully does that and when that happens you kind of i think what it does for a child is it makes them feel a little bit uh, more mature and a little bit more validated in, in in being an audience member, unknowingly to them, of course, they're not seeing their seven years old. Like I am validated, but you know that's how they kind of feel. It's like, oh, I'm here to see this movie, and I'm allowed to see this, and wow, it's kind of intense. So I think that adds to it. And and look, the end, the ending when the mask is coming down on Vader, and it closes. And I, and I, you know, when you watched it in the theater that first time, and it went silent, the theater went silent, and then when you heard the breathing, the audience like there was like first it was like a sigh of relief, and then like an applause because that's what we waited, you know, those six years for. That's what we waited, you know, through all of those movies to see. That's what we were promised, and he definitely delivered on that on that part of the promise for sure is we got to see the mask lower on Vader. And then of course him standing while they're watching the Death Star being built in the distance. There's a lot of awesome Star Wars in this movie. No Jango Fett, but a lot of awesome Star Wars movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um yeah, no, it's maybe it deserves its place here. So that's cool. I, I'm glad that we see a different contender in the third spot so that's awesome yeah i'm I'm worried that it's gonna take over another one in the top three one <laughs> but, but look, is there is there a movie brock on this list that if it happened to be placed in the top three you'd be like this is wrong this is completely wrong no i don't think so because this is all like public opinion so it's like you can't get mad it's <laughs> we all wrote a list out and we put number you put the numbers to it so like yeah. That's what's great. It's like just adding up, man. And look, honestly, maybe tomorrow Revenge of the Sith is the movie I'd want to watch the most. And I make it, it was not number one on my list, but maybe it would be yeah. uh, number one on my list one day. Uh, all right. Um, number two is uh, number, two. number two on the list. Number one in our hearts. Uh, Should have been number one. I'm not even joking. I'm pretty sure, Brock, because I looked at our top three last year, and this was number one last year. Yeah, I yeah. think every other year this changes. I honestly think every other year this changes. This is like Canada and Russia in the World Juniors Hockey Championship. It's like back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, Yeah, I mean, if you've watched any of these episodes in the last four or five times we've done it, I'm always like Return of the Jedi is my number one. It just Same. is. So, yeah, I uh, there's not much you can explain. I there's Ewoks. There, like the Battle of Endor is hands down one of the funnest battle scenes ever. And like it's happening on the moon, and it's also happening in front of the second Death Star. Like all that, it's just like, whoo. And they never they tried to replicate that. I think in Last Jedi or Last Jedi Rise of Skywalker, and it's just like. It's just not the same. Um, yeah, and like it's nice to watch that's that uh, and see like the practical side of it, even though they've you know cleaned it up and what have you and CG'd the hell out of it. But like, ah, uh, it's fantastic. My favorite. I think you brought up one point there about Rise of Skywalker trying to emulate it, and I think that's 
one of the flaws for me of all three of the sequels is they, I know it's poetry, it rhymes, but I think at some point they should have just like <sighs> taken off and all three of them are very mm-hmm. like magnetically connected to their yeah. original trilogy counterpoint. Because even like the, the prequels in a lot of ways, the Phantom Menace is very much Return of the Jedi in a lot of ways. Like it's, mm-hmm. it's very mm-hmm. much that, but it kind of just goes off and becomes the prequels. Yeah. Um, whereas the sequels just kind of like they stay on that, Death Star Trench the entire the entire time and just couldn't break away from it. Uh, and number one, of course, one. is Caravan of Courage. <laughs> Empire Strikes Back. I mean, the biggest sequel in movie history. Like it's when you have a good sequel. I'm not saying there aren't good sequels, but like when you have a good sequel, you compare it to Empire Strikes Back. So it's 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 a. Uh, pr- Pretty solid flip. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Um, but yeah. Empire Strikes Back works so brilliantly. It, the problem with Empire Strikes Back is it doesn't work without a new hope, uh, without mm-hmm. going through that. Not a problem, but that's not mm-hmm. what I meant. But it's a perfect sequel in that it takes what you loved about A New Hope, about these characters in the first installment, and instead of just doing another adventure with them, it makes them grow. It gives them arcs. It's like, no, this is actually about this. It's not so much about what you thought it's about. Now it's a little bit. And, and they, the brilliance of Empire Strikes Back, and I think what they were going for in The Last Jedi, but the brilliance of Empire Strikes Back is it it does what I I, I kind of I kind of wish um, a lot of other movies do. And I think Ghostbusters Afterlife did this, is it, it shrinks it down. Mm-hmm. Instead of like Return of the Jedi exploding it open, right? Empire Strikes Back is like, we could go out there, but instead we're going to bring it in and we're going to make it a closer to home story. And hopefully you're going to appreciate that. And then that gives them permission to then make it Return of the Jedi yeah. and take out the floodgates. And I, and that's what's so great about this movie is it's not over the top. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's a guy training with a, with a frog and then, and then, uh, I mean, Han Solo and Carbonite is just the saddest <laughs> thing of all time. And should probably, <laughs> and you know what? They should remake it and not freeze. Han Solo. <laughs> but again, um, it's yeah, exactly. And they, it's funny thing about Empire and Return of the Jedi, like they have to be on top. And it's like, I perhaps people will start looking at them again because now we have book of boba fett and like the that's smack dab in that world so we're not gonna talk about today we'll talk about on the podcast but of course um wow what a list uh it's always really nice to start the year with this or i think that this is a is this like our episode to end the year but it always comes out on (laughs) your day i don't know what it is i maybe it's because we do it the years so i don't know but what do you think of the list so far james or in you know, total? it's like it's a great li- it's a great list um you know i can't say anything about it it's not my list obviously i mm-hmm. had i don't think any one of these lined up with where i had them on mine but that's what makes it fun is you get you know 30 plus of these and all of a sudden it doesn't really i mean it does matter but it's not it's mm-hmm. not yours anymore. So you can see kind of like, oh, this is where the Star Wars community, well, our little bubble of the Star Wars community, this is where their heads are at yeah. right now. And I think, I do think we're going to see Attack of the Clones move up. And I think we might see Revenge of the Sith take over that number two spot from one of these Return of the Jedi or Empire Strikes Back soon. I think that's going to happen. Right, right, right. Sorry. It's exciting. It's um, hmm. it's like it's, a, it's like a weird race. <laughs> Yeah, it's like it's almost it's like what do we add more to this list movies or people because i feel like the grouping of people change so it's like it's almost like we got to yeah. open this up to more people so like it's interesting to watch it change up so when we first did it i think there was five or six of us <laughs> yeah it was so small now there's 30 to i think it's almost 40 we had this wow year. that's crazy yeah and then i didn't get lists from some people and i said i can't add anymore we're done i'm not <laughs> I'm not going to ask you again. I can't do this. But anyway, that is our ranking Star Wars show. Let us know how wrong this was uh, in the comments below, or if you agreed with it, or what your rankings are. Put your rankings in the comments below. Brock, anything else you'd like to say? 
Uh, thank you to all that contribute on this. Uh, thank you for watching and have yourself a happy new year. Happy new year, everybody. Brock, you were always scum. Rebel scum. Hey, scumbags. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up on our video. As always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Rebel Scum Podcast, for all the latest videos.